not only starts it, but it moves it. That's great. Yeah, just command the vehicle to get out. on mm -hmm. the remote device um, as soon as you release the button the car will stop immediately okay. so you are fully in control and can do actuate the vehicle what's doing um, the steering is done by the car itself so it uses sensors to see where is the breeze case and then it will steer accordingly you just tell the car whether you want to drive forward park in or drive backwards park out and the rest is done by the by the car itself so I will start the engine again. You can also park it in too. Yeah, yeah right. and I will tell the car to park in now. So it will now check where is the lead space and it will oh, steer great. accordingly to center the vehicle in the gap. And it's going to yeah. Will it automatically stop as well? Yeah, I can show this to you as well because that's important. There could be an obstacle in the way. Um, of the engine at the end. Up last now. So I will turn it out. I can release the button. Stop it immediately. Tell it to continue. Walk in front of it. We will stop immediately okay. and wait for the driver to say what to do. Okay. So in the moment we are, we need to move anyone so I can stand there. So we are using the ultrasonic sensors, uh, six at the front, six at the rear. These are the same we are using for the other active park assist functions. Um, so with those, uh, the car detects the free space and potential obstacles. Then we have the remote control device. We have different concepts we are working on. This one is a special control device. It uses a special radio, radio frequency to communicate with the vehicle. There are of course a lot of strong requirements because it needs to be secure. We don't want somebody else to come to your car and drive away with it using his remote control device. Um, but the disadvantage for the driver is of course he needs an additional device so we are working on another concept where you use um, just your normal key fob in combination with your smartphone so the secure communication is done with the key fob and uh, the, your smartphone communicates via bluetooth to the vehicle so you can use the smartphone to operate it to tell it go to the left to the right straight away into the gap or out but the key confirms that you are allowed to set it to go somewhere. So there's an app for that coming. Exactly. Yeah, of course, it requires a special app. Uh, and then with a the smartphone, of course, you can use it for different vehicles uh, because the unique one or the unique thing is the key fob. So you can, if you have the right key fob, you can use it on any type of vehicle, in fact. When is that coming? Uh, even if I would know, I would not be allowed to tell you, to be honest. But I, I, I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm a developing engineer so for this system. Um, it's not my decision when it, when it needs to come. We, ha we have this, uh, I told you we have two different concepts. We have this one using the ultrasonic sensors and this special key fob. We are working on another concept at the moment. This one is more or less almost ready for <laughs> application. The other one, we are still working with it. The other one has also an additional advantage. Um, additional to the ultrasonic sensor, we are using also 360 degree radars. So four radars at each of the corners. And with these radars, we can uh, understand in a much better way what's happening around our vehicle. So you saw when I, um, when I went in front of the vehicle, the vehicle stopped. That's all we can do with the ultrasonic sensors. With the radar sensors, we would be able also to uh, detect the scene in a better way so that we go around the pedestrian. So if I would stop like here, of course, then you cannot do anything. 
but if I would be like here, then it could be around me and use the breathe phase, which is here, uh, and just continue without uh, and ignoring me more or less. So that's uh, yeah, different uh, concept. Um, yeah, it's a lot of, of course, intelligent software. Um, on, on the sensing side, I said we can use the ultrasonic sensors which we have already on the car, so nothing to change there. Something we need to uh, change definitely is the transmission, because you are outside and you need to do everything from outside, so it has to be everything automated. So shifting out of E, shifting to D, to R, etc. Uh, it has to be done automatically and uh, without needing somebody to press the brakes, for example, to shift out of D and this kind of thing. Um, at the moment, current legislation would allow this feature in Europe, so there's no problem. We checked everything. We could introduce it tomorrow already. Uh, however, in the US, there, are, there is still one regulation which needs to be modified, so in the moment it would not be allowed to have such a feature in the US because there it is required that somebody presses the brake pedal for shifting out of D and of course here there is no one in the car so we should do that but that's not really my area to be honest because I'm from uh, the driver assistance technologies so I'm the guy who is responsible for the sensing, the steering and this kind of stuff and uh, everything which is related to the remote control device is uh, from another department I'm not in that but I'm pretty sure there will be other features. I think we have already announced uh, on the edge that we have uh, remote door unlocking, um, remote start, I think, this kind of stuff. I'm pretty sure it will become more in the future. So you're in like the Internet of Things kind of space, more or less, yeah. right? the yeah. sensors and the hardware side. Yes. Yeah.